Hi, let's start with a quick review on how to show proportionality on a table before we move into equations. And you've already done with a lot, a lot with equations, so I hope this is pretty easy for you. So, first, does this table show proportionality? We have many, many ways to check. One way that I want you to get used to checking is that unit rate. So finding the unit rate, which is the y change over the x change. So it's always our inde sorry, dependent variable divided by the independent variable. So 5, I'm going to skip this 0 1 and go to this. So here, our unit rate is 10 over 1. Here, 15 over 2, that unit rate comes to 7.5 over 1. So already I know that the unit rates are not the same. So I can say unit rates are not the same. So no, it does not show proportionality. So let's check another one. Does this table show proportionality? Well, I can see that 0, 0. So already I know that yes, because there is a 0, 0 relationship. However, just because you have 0, 0 does not mean necessarily that, it show, that it's proportional. We know that all proportional relationships have a 0, 0, but we need to delve in further. So I'm going to check my unit rates. So I'm going to put and, so here, 10 over 1. 20 over 2 simplifies to 10 over 1. And 30 over 3, and again, it's always that y change over the x change. The y change over the x change. 30 over 3 also equals 10 over 1. So there is a yes because there is a 0, 0 relationship and all unit rates are the same. And I hope you're writing neater than I am right now. So what is that unit rate? What is the rate? It is 10. We also see it here because if you multiply, if it triples, this one triples. So we can also see it there. So my unit rate is 10. And if we knew what the labels were, we would have labels here as well. Miles per hour, dollars per orange, whatever. So let's look closely at what we know about proportional relationships. What, specifically, what do we know about equations of proportional relationships? Well, proportional relationships we know have a 0, 0 relationship. That means if x is 0, y has to be 0. So if we write an equation like this, y equals 3x, and we plug in 0 for x, we should get 0 for y. And in this case, we do. 0 does equal 3 times 0. So we know that this is a proportional relationship. I want to show you one that would not be. If we had something like y equals 3x plus 2, let's say, and we plugged 0 in for y and 0 in for x, it does not make a true relationship. So, again, we have to have that 0, 0 relationship. So if we plug 0 in for x and 0 in for y, it makes a true statement. We also know all of the equations that we've written so far fits that y equals mx, where m is that rate, or we also are going to say slope, y equals mx. So if you know, again, y equals 3x, it fits that y equals mx where that 3 is the m, or the rate. So there is nothing added or subtracted. Sometimes when we have a relation, excuse me, an equation, it doesn't look like this right away. We might have to change some things, and that's what we're going to be practicing today. So again, to recap, this means if we simplify the equation, it will end up in the y equals mx plus b, sorry, mx form, y equals mx form. 
For example, here is my y. I want to get that y on a side by itself. So you have to use what you know about solving equations to do that. It says plus 2, so we're going to subtract 2. So now I have y equals 4x. It fits this form, y equals mx. So we know that it's proportional. And the m, y equals mx, the m is 4. So the m tells us the rate. So my rate is 4. And just to prove it, I'm going to plug in 0 for the y and 0 for the x. And it makes a true statement. So we also know we have that 0, 0 relationship. Okay, and this is where it kind of gets tricky because you really have to understand inverse operations and solving equations. Here is the y right here. So we need this y, oops, this y on a side by itself. So I have to do a lot of work to get it there. So first I have that plus 5. So we know if we have plus 5, we're going to subtract 5. So now I have 5x equals 3y. And now I really like the y on the left-hand side. And since they're just equal to each other, I'm going to flip them. So it's on the right, sorry, the left side. So 3y equals 5x. Now this is the part you really have to get used to. 3 is being multiplied by y. y is being multiplied by 3. We want to get rid of that 3 to leave y. So if it's multiplied, we know we need to divide. So now I have y equals 5 thirds x. It fits the form. We don't have anything added or subtracted. If we put, let me change colors, if we put 0 in, 0 equals 5 thirds times 0. 5 thirds times 0 is 0. That works. So this is our rate, and it is proportional. So yes, it's proportional. The other way you could have done this is put, just go back to that putting in 0 right away. 5 times 0 plus 5 equals 3 times 0 plus 5. That 0, that 0, I'm left with 5 equals 5, which makes a true statement. So I know that this is a proportional relationship. All right, let's try 2. We have a lot of things going on. Here's something we can simplify. So I'm going to leave my 10x plus 1 equals y plus 2 minus 5. So if we have a positive 2 minus 5, think back to your integer rules, plus a negative 5. That is minus 3, or plus a negative 3. Now I am going to think I want y by itself, so I am going to add 3. So now I have y equals 10x plus 4. And I'm going to flip these around because I like my y on the left side. So I would say no. This is not a proportional relationship. And my justification would be it doesn't fit y equals mx. Or I could say when I plug 0 in for y and 0 in for x, it does not make a true statement. 0 does not equal 4. So there is no 0, 0 relationship. So the main part of your assignment today is focusing on those equations. Putting 0 in for x and y, seeing if it works out. Putting it equal to y, so y, looking for that y equals mx. But I also want you to do some extra review. So you might have some problems like this. For each, determine if it's proportional, justify. If it is, find the rate and write the equation. So is this one proportional? Yes, it is. Why? It 
it. I don't like that word it. I want to be specific, so I'm going to say the graph is a straight line is a straight line gosh going through the origin and I'm going to put down here it's showing a zero zero relationship so what is our rate we can find the rate in many different places you can look when this here. So when y is 1, x is 1. When y is 2, x is 2. When y is 3, x is 3. So if you simplify those, y change over the x change, it's always going to be, and I'll just use 3 over 3, it's always going to be 1. So the equation for every y we're going up 1 for every x. And remember, when 1 is a coefficient, you don't have to have it written in. y equals x. All right, let's try another. The reason, by the way, I'm really um, emphasizing equations and graphs is because I know what's coming up. It is so important you become proficient at this. So, is it proportional? Yes, it is. How do we know? It is, and I hope you are writing neater and better sentences than me, it is a straight line going through the, do you remember that vocabulary word? Origin. So it shows that zero, zero relationship. So what is the rate? The rate is always how much it is going up compared to how much it is going over, how much it's going down compared to how much it's going over, or the y change over the x change. So I'm going to pick my two points. It went up 3 for every 1. Or I could have said it went up 6 for every 2. And either way, it simplifies to 3. If we knew what the labels were, we would definitely put it. Let's say this was miles and this was hours. We would then say miles per hour. The equation, what is happening? For every y, it is going up 3 for every x. So this rate is always the coefficient of x. And it's sometimes easier to see on a table because we can see what that constant multiplier is. But from before, from the last couple of assessment, assignments, we know that that rate goes as the coefficient of x. All right, last one. Let's get crazy. So let's see here. Examine the following. Examine the following graph. Okay, so here we're talking distance. We're talking miles. We can see how it's going up. Determine the constant of proportionality. Remember that constant of proportionality, constant of proportionality is just the rate. So the constant of proportionality, make sure you're adding this to your notes, is the rate. We also call that the slope of the line. So the constant of proportionality is the rate or the slope in a proportional relationship. It is what we're multiplying by. It's that common factor. It's a multiple. I mean, so, and then we're going to write it, use it to write an equation. So, what is our constant? I have k or m in because we have been talking about it as y equals mx, but many times, including on standardized tests, they use k for constant. Even though k constant begins with a c. Not sure why, but it's k for constant. So, let's look. What is happening? Remember that constant is what is happening to x to get to y. So, here, we, how much do we go over? Sorry, up to and over. So, we have to go up 20 for 1. So let's pick another point here. Um, and here. We had to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 or 40, from 40 to 80, 
is 40 for every 2 hours. 40 divided by 2 is 20. And the 40 was the distance in miles, and the 2 was the hours. So every time we are going up 20 for every 1 hour. So that is our constant, 20 miles per hour. And so the equation, very simple. Y equals the M is the 20, that's our constant, 20x. We could have used D for distance. Distance equals rate times time. There's your rate. Here's the time. How far would the traveler go? Let me erase some of this. So I can write. So I'm going to just rewrite the 20 miles per hour. Y equals 20 X. How far would the traveler get at this rate after two hours? We can see that part on the graph. After two hours, he went 40 miles. How far would the traveler get after 10 hours? If it's not on the graph or it's in a like a decimal, I suggest using your equation. Y equals 20 times. Well, we want to know 10 hours. That's our X. So it'd be way over here. Um, so we're going to take that 10 and put it in for our x. 20 times 10 is 200, and it's how far? So 200 miles. So again, you find your rate. You put it as the coefficient of x, and you take whatever we're talking about, plug it into the equation for the correct variable, and then solve. And that's it for today. We out.